Hi, welcome back to Box Delight's game channel. In this series, we're playing Police Precinct. This is an early 2013 release. It's a cooperative board game for one to six players, which is great for me because it means I can demonstrate a solo playthrough. I'm going to dive straight into playing the game and we'll learn to play as we play. For now, let's open the box and take a look at the components. As you can see, there's an absolute ton of stuff which comes with the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this, and the way I like to keep things is in one of my little WAM boxes, or Plano boxes, a um, little storage box, and that keeps everything nicely organised. And this board, the game board, is huge. It's going to take up the whole of this table. So I like to have everything in a box so that I can play straight out of the box in an organised fashion. Let me show you how I've done that. That looks better, right? Everything's where we need it to be playing the game. There's a few things that we don't need, so we've got good cop, dirty cop cards. There's player's reference cards here, we'll keep one of those handy. This is the Madman expansion, which adds some more difficult cards. We're going to put those to one side, we're not going to use those during this game. We've got some spare tokens here, these are called unknown circumstances, and these are things which vary the, uh, the random events which come up. And there's some four blank ones that you can use to customise your games. We'll put those aside, we don't need those. We've got a fifth patrol officer, there's four that we need for the game and they've supplied us with five, so if there's an extra one we can discard. And there's 18 of these street punk tokens. And playing solitaire we only need 14, so I'm going to put four of these back in the box. You use the um, 14 when you're playing two player as well, and at the moment I'm either playing one or two player, so I'd like to just back these up, I'm not going to need them stick them back in the box. The other good thing is that this box will fit in the game box. All I need to do is take out the cardboard insert. So that's how I'm going to store my game. It's going to be tricky for me to get a wide shot on this. This game challenges Arkham Horror for the amount of space it needs. So this is the game board and this represents the city of Commonville. In addition we need the murder investigation board and the crime track and we'll place those to one side of the board. So this is our murder investigation board. And this is our crime track. So to give you a bit of background on what it is we're trying to achieve, we've got to capture a murderer. So there's a crime scene in the city, you're going to have to investigate that murder, and you've got to find witness statements, crime scene evidence, the murder weapon, the cause of death and the time of death from the autopsy reports. That's only one route to victory in this game, and that's collecting all of this evidence before the murderer escapes. However, there's many ways of failing. We've got this Commonville crime track, there's street punks in the town, there's street gangs, there's urgent emergencies, and there's criminal events happening all over town. These things, if not handled, are going to cause the crime rate to rise. We hit fail, and we lose. The murderer escapes before we've collected all the evidence, we lose. We're going to grab the crime rate token and the turn marker. Crime rate marker starts here on the start spot. Um, playing solitaire, you're assuming a two player game. And it says we start at turn number one for a two player, eight for three, twelve for four, and fourteen, fifteen for five and six players. We'll place our turn marker here. Once we get down to turn 16, then the murderer is going to appear in the neighbourhood. And he's going to move around. Each turn he's going to move through the city. And if we don't arrest that guy, having collected all the evidence, go there, arrest the murderer, before he hits this point, the murderer has escaped and we've lost the game. And here's that murderer. We're going to leave him here until turn 16. There's a few other little bits we're going to keep in the box till we need them. These unknown circumstance tokens, they're things like they could be wielding a shotgun or holding a knife. They don't respect uniform cops. They've got some stolen goods. There's an angry dog there. So there's stuff here that you can kind of take you by surprise and you might be unprepared for. Please give these things a good old shuffle. Simple little wash shuffle on the board is a good way to get these randomised. And I'll play with these straight out of the box. These ones don't need to be shuffled, these are 
uh, these are like level ups that you can take. Police cards, they're going to need a good shuffle. So we'll shuffle these. And I like to place them in these two empty spots here. Likewise, we need these four street gang cards. We'll place those here to be drawn from. The rest of these cards, this is going to be the evidence that we're looking for. So we've got murder weapon, we've got crime scene evidence, we've got interview witnesses and examine body. And these are going to go in their respective spots on the board. So let's do that right now. The first deck is the crime scene. And in here there's lots of nothings and there's six. So we've got fingerprints, blood spatters, so on and so on. So we've got bit evidence from the crime scene. And we've got to fill these six slots. So we're going to be searching this deck for those six pieces of evidence. So we're going to give this a good old shuffle. And now we've got to locate the crime scene, which is just here, west of Tolatoy Apartments, on block four. So during the game, we're going to come here and search the crime scene for evidence. Next, witness statements. And there's two witness statements here that we've got to find. And then we've got to find out where, across Commonville, those witnesses are going to be found. So all the witnesses, they've been shepherded off to a random apartment building. We've rolled 1d6 and it's come up with number 6. And this tells us which apartment block those witnesses are currently to be found. Apartment block 6 is over here, the Vilfred Apartments. So we'll place these witness statements. The interview witness cards here in this apartment block. So our job is going to be to travel here and try and see, seek out witness statements. Our autopsy reports, well they're in the examine body stack and that's easy, they're over here in the morgue over on block one. And we need to find two of those autopsy reports before we can arrest the murderer. And finally, lastly, the murder weapon. And after fleeing the scene the murderer dumps the murder weapon in a random warehouse. So again, we'll roll 1d6 to figure out which block. And it's number 6. So that means we're going to place the murder weapon in number 6 warehouse. Block 6 over here. So it's right here. Next we need to shuffle the event deck. And for setup, we're going to grab two of these as a kind of random events that get the game quite flowing really and kicking off with stuff happening and again as a bit of a space saver I like to place the event cards here in the uh, in the police station and we're looking for emergency cards, there's two types of cards in in this event deck emergency cards have the the flashing police light in the top left and then you have these special cards here, these special events that are dealt with either immediately or they stay on the board has kind of permanent effects until you resolve them. The setup, we need to find two event cards. So let's draw. So the first one is an emergency at the Commonville Ho Hotel and it has an unknown circumstance happening there as well. This is the difficulty of the event and this is the reward, you get one donor, or you get to look at two investigation cards for uh, for your reward. And the difficulty here is in relation to a, to a D6. So we're going to have to roll a 3 or higher on a D6 to solve this emergency. I'll show you that once we get into the game. For now, all we need to do is find the location of the emergency, which is Commonville Hotel, which happens to be right here. And we place this card here, and then we grab an unknown circumstance token. Grab the top one. I'm going to keep this face down. It's going to be a surprise if and when we come to resolve that emergency. And the next thing we do is we take notice of this plus one street punk icon in the top right there. What that means is we need to place one street punk in a random bad hood. The street punks, they're just a source of constant annoyance throughout the, uh, throughout the city. If you ever get four street punks in one of these bad hoods, this is bad hood four, bad hood three. If you ever get four of those, then they're going to form a street gang, and street gangs can become more difficult to resolve. 
you've got a limit of 14. Remember, we've only got 14 street punts in the game. If you ever have run out of those 14, so the street punts are appearing all over the city and you're not doing anything about them, you're not arresting them and putting their, their tokens back in the supply, then the crime rate track over here is going to move up one step. And remember, this is our losing condition we will get here. So we've got to keep an eye on street punks and street gangs. So to place this street punk, all we do is we roll 1d6 for our setup, and it's 4. And that means we place one street punk over in bad hood number 4. So I'll grab this guy, place him down here in bad hood number 4. During setup, we're also going to place 6. And you do this every game, 6. Six street punks in the city, and during the rules it says if you if you draw any of these ones due to emergencies, place them afterwards. But I watched Ole, the game designer's setup video, and he did it at the time that these cards were drawn. So I'm going to follow Ole. We've got to draw two emergencies during setup, so let's draw one more card. Uh, this time it's one of these purple special events, so I just ignore it. I keep drawing till I find an emergency. Okay, there we go. It says um, there's some smugglers. And they're operating out of a random warehouse. So we're going to roll a die. Remember, there's six blocks. And every time we need to pick a random location, it's either one, two, three, four, five, or six. The central zone here, where the police station is, we don't have uh, we don't have random stuff going on here. Okay, so let's roll. And it's a two, which is over here, and the warehouse here is Sabers Warehouse. So that's where this emergency is going down. There's no street punk icon in the top right this time, so nothing else to place. This one, this pink one, we just shuffle that back into the deck. So any that you draw that are special events, shuffle them back into the deck. And we're ready for setup then. Okay, like I say, these normally go at the side of the board, but as a space saver, I just like to keep them here. You'll notice too that these two emergencies are different colours. This is a blue one, this is a red one. That's going to be significant as the game develops, and I'll show you that as it happens. Now we're going to place those six random street punks that I was telling you about, so we need to take all six of our dice that come with the game. And we'll give those a roll. So we're going to place street punks two, hit bad hood six, one at Bad Hood 5, two at Bad Hood 3, and one at Bad Hood number 2. So these six come from the supply. Remember, we've got a limited supply of 14. There's one already down. Plus these six, we're halfway through already. So we need two at Bad Hood number 6. And they kind of sit here on the sidewalk. All the paths, as we say, over here in the UK. One at Bad Hood number 5. Two at bad hood number three up here at top right. These guys are hanging outside Duffy's bar. And then the last one at bad hood number two, just here. And that's the board all set up. So the next thing we need to do is pick our police officers for the players and set those guys up. There's eight of these cards to choose from in Commonville Police Department. So there's Quite a good variety, and when you're playing solitaire, you want to be playing with two police officers. I mean, the thing to do is look at their look at their abilities. This is how capable they are of, of doing investigations, how capable they are of doing arrests, how capable they are of responding to emergencies, and then they've got these special abilities. So this guy is resourceful and thorough. So you need to check these kind of out and see which ones you like the look of. Well, I'm going to choose uh, Kirkland, I think, and uh, Dougie Pierce, because then I can show you the SWAT commander and also what the federal agents do. So if any player chose Detective James Kirkland, you need to take two SWAT tokens. There is a, a spare one that you don't need. I could baggy that up and, and put that elsewhere, actually. And there's two federal agent tokens. We only need one. So if you are playing Detective Doug Pierce, he gets the Federal Agent token. So let's give this to, to him. OK, 
character and gets the, uh, the swap tokens. These are the only two players that have those tokens. Choose anybody else, they don't get used in the game. We'll pick one of these guys to be the start player, so we'll give him that token. So he's the first player, and Kirkland's going to be the first player on every turn, alright? Like I say, playing solitaire, you always choose two police officers. Of course, you could play three, four, five, or, you know, as many as you want, but a minimum of two is what you need. Next, we take their patrol car, and each of these patrol cars is named, except for this one here. This is a support vehicle, and we're going to use that when you're playing uh, one or two players. So we're looking for Pierce and Kirkland, and we'll place all these vehicles outside the police station for the start of the game. Okay. Each of these uh, these vehicles is either marked or unmarked. So this looks like your regular police car and then if you flip it over you've got an unmarked car. So when you're moving around you can decide whether you're travelling in a marked or an unmarked vehicle. At the beginning of your turn you get to flip that token so it doesn't really matter how we place them during setup because we're going to have an opportunity to to flip those if we want to before we take our first turn. For your support vehicle it's up to you. It's going to stay that way through the rest of the game really so you can either have it unmarked or marked. The difference really is on how mobile the car is so if it's, uh, if it's a marked vehicle and it can get through the traffic a little bit easier it's able to move three streets per turn unmarked and it's got to go with the flow of the traffic only two streets per turn. Finally, each officer gets two police cards. So we'll draw two for James Kirkland. He gets officer assistance and surveillance. And Detective Pierce gets allocate resources and stakeouts. These police cards, they're cards that you can play on your turn the text at the bottom here and we'll learn more about them once we get into into gameplay so for example stakeout here says if you're in an unmarked car you can play this when you're in a street with a bad hood remove a street punk from the from the board allocate resources says we can use this at the police station get some more police cards and then Kirkland's got this surveillance van and officer assistance and that's when we can get patrol officers on the board. So these patrol officers are guys that can, can help you resolve emergencies and what have you. Again, we'll get into those stuff once we hit the gameplay. You can only play these on your own turn. But you'll notice they've also got these um, little icons in the top top right here. And these on each card correspond to your, your basic skills of uh, investigation, arresting and responding to emergencies. So when it's not your turn you can forgo the text on these cards and play one of these cards to offer some support to your colleague. All right, but you can only play those when it's not your turn. You're supporting another officer. That's it then, we're all done. We're set up, ready to play. Join me next time for turn one.